Now that we have learned what is meant by a cert and what is an index, let's now look at the laws of cert and the laws of indices. Let's start with the laws of indices. So as you can see here, we have got seven different points here, right? Seven different rules of indices. And as I've mentioned earlier, these would be handy while doing simplifications related to indices. So let's look at them uh, one by one. Now the first one here says a to the power of m into a to the power of n equals to a raised to the power of n plus n. So what do you understand here? If you look at the basis, both the bases are equal. The base in the first term is a and the base in the second term as well is a. So the bases are equal and are getting multiplied. In such case, the powers can be added. As you see here, m plus n is the resultant power. For example, let's say we have uh, 3 to the power of 4 into 3 to the power of 2. So we see that the bases are equal and are in multiplication form. So this can be taken as 3 to the power of 4 plus 2 which is 3 to the power of 6. What's the second one? a raised to the power of m divided by a raised to the power of n. So again the bases are equal and are getting divided here. So the powers as you see here are getting subtracted. The index of each term I mean, we take the difference of the two indices. So this becomes a to the power of m minus n. Let's, let's look at an example. Let's say we have 2 to the power of 5 uh, divided by 2 to the power of 2. Or this may also be shown as 2 by 5 divided by 2 power 2. Right? 2 to the power of 5 divided by 2 power 2. So we see that the bases are equal and they are actually getting divided. So the powers have to be subtracted. We should take the difference of these two powers. Or 5 minus 2. So what do we get? 2 to the power of 5 minus 2 which is equal to 2 to the power of 2 to the power of 3. 2 power 3 as we all know is equal to 8. Let's simplify this and see what happens. 2 to the power of 5 is 32. 2 to the power of 2 is equal to 4. 32 divided by 4 is equal to 8. Here we directly say that 2 q is equal to 8. So that is the advantage of using these laws. right? With the help of these laws, instead of simplifying each term and then dividing them or multiplying them, we can directly look at the resultant term and simplify to get the required answer. What is the third law here? a to the power of n whole raised to the power of n. a is raised to the power of m and that whole number is again raised to the power of n. This can be taken as a to the power of m into n. So here we are multiplying the two index, right? Multiplying the two indices. For example, you know, 5 square whole to the power of 3. So this can be taken as 5 to the power of 2 into 3, which is equal to 5 power 5. 5 power 6. 2 into 3 is equal to 6. So we say that 2 5 square whole cube is equal to 5 power 6, right? The next one here, a to the power of m into b to the power of m can be taken as a into b whole to the power of m. So what do we see here? The bases are different. Unlike the previous cases, here the bases are different. The first term has got a base of a and the second one has the base b. But then the powers are equal. The indices in each term are equal. In such case, the bases can be directly multiplied. Right? Since there is a multiplication symbol here, we directly multiply them. So a into b to the power of m. For example, if we have, uh, let's say, 2 cube into 4 cube, 2 cube into 4 cube. So we see that the two bases are different, but in multiplication form and the powers are equal. In such case, we can simply take it as 2 into 4 whole cube, which is nothing but 2 into 4, 8, 8 cube, 8 cube. So you can take it as 8 cube, which is 5, 12, right? The next one. In a similar form, instead of multiplication, we have a division sign here, right? So a to the power of m divided by b to the power of m. So again, the bases are different, but in division form. And the powers are equal. So in this case, it can be taken as a divided by b whole to the power of m. So if we take, let's say, 8 power 5 divided by 2 power 5. So the two bases are different, right? The first term has got a base 8 and the second one has the base 2 raised to the power of 5 in each case. So this can be taken as 8 divided by 2 whole to the power of 5. Now what is 8 by 2? 8 by 2 equals to 4. So this becomes 4 to the power of 5, right? So 8 divided by 2, 4, 4 to the power of 5. Now if required, we can simplify 4 to the power of 5, which will be much easier when compared to taking 8 power 5 and then dividing it by 2 power 5, right? 4 power 5, 4 getting multiplied by itself 5 times, right? 
The next one, point number six or rule number six here. A raised to the power of zero is equal to one. Now, though this looks simple, it is very, very important. A raised to the power of zero equals to one. So, what do you understand here? Any base, you know that A is any positive integer there. Any base when raised to the power of zero results in one. Right? So, for example, 2 to the power of 0 equals to 1, 3 power 0 equals to 1, 10 power 0 equals to 1 or for that matter 379 to the power of 0 without any second thought you can say that it is equal to 1. Any base raised to the power of 0 is equal to 1 and this will be very very useful while solving some questions from indices right where we can you know express any base to the power of 0 as 1 or sometimes we can take 1 as uh, any particular base which is desired to the power of 0 depends on the uh, question there right so any base to the power of 0 should be equal to 1 is always equal to 1 right uh, to take some example let's say you know 279 to the power of 0 equals to 1 or let's say 42 to the power of 0 equals to 1 and so on and the last one here point number 7 rule number 7 1 by a to the power of m right so the numerator here is 1 and the denominator has got an index as you see a number raised to a particular power a to the power of m this can be simplified as a raised to the power of minus 1 so basically a power which is in the denominator when it takes when it is taken to the numerator becomes a negative power right for example you know 1 by uh, 6 to the power of 3 can be taken as 6 to the power of minus 3 or the converse is also true 6 to the power of minus 3 can be expressed as 1 by 6 to the power of 3. So point number 7 and point number 6 will be very much useful while doing simplifications based on indices. In fact not just these two points but every rule here is important but we have to be you know using these two points rule number 6 and rule number 7 very intelligently to arrive at the required answer in a simple manner.